Turning to the war in Ukraine, with Russia seeing an attack on its capital city for the first time since the start of this invasion. Russia's defense ministry claims that Ukraine was behind the drone strikes on residential buildings in Moscow early this morning, which Vladimir Putin is calling, quote, terrorist activity. Ukraine is denying any direct involvement. In video posted to Telegram, you can faintly hear the explosions. You can see a plume of smoke rising over Moscow. This as Russia continues its near daily aerial attacks on civilian targets far from the front lines in Ukraine. At least one person is now dead after Russia launched at least 20 drones at Kyiv overnight. The third aerial attack on the capital in just the past 24 hours. That includes a rare daytime attack on the capital city that sent people screaming and running for cover. Joining us now from Kyiv is NBC News foreign correspondent Molly Hunter and also with us MSNBC military analyst Lieutenant General Steph Twitty. Molly, what do we know first about these early morning drone attacks in Moscow? Hey, Anna, nice to be with you. And look, you laid it out pretty well there. The limit of our information in Kyiv is just, of course, that official Russian narrative at this point. We do not have, uh, I'm not in Moscow, of course, I'm here. So anything that we are reading and getting is what Ukrainian officials are putting out, what we are confirming and verifying on social media or the official line. So the official line from Moscow from the Russian Ministry of Defense is that eight drones attacked targets in Moscow today. They were all shot down. Now, the Kremlin has said, Dmitry Peskov, the spokesperson for the Kremlin earlier, said that President Putin was briefed very early. There were some light injuries. There was light damage. Two people were hospitalized. Uh, Moscow, as you said, is pointing the finger directly at Kyiv. A senior Ukrainian official earlier today says we are watching closely, but denies that they have anything to do with it, Anna. And so, General Twitty, Ukraine, again, denying any direct involvement in the Moscow attack, although one of the officials there says they were pleased to observe this and predict an increase in the number of attacks. So if it isn't Ukraine, then who? Is there a resistance inside Russia capable of carrying out an attack like this? Well, what we've seen over the past couple of weeks are Russian pro-Ukrainian fighters out there. They could have conducted uh, the attacks. Uh, they would have had to get the equipment, obviously, from probably Ukraine to do so. But we can't discount that there are some Russians that are disgruntled at the way this war has uh, progressed. And there's Russians that are disgruntled because they don't like the fact that Russia is in a war anyway. And so I would not discount uh, pro-Russian. I suspect, though, that it's probably the Ukrainians that uh, conducted this attack. Could it be part of a Ukrainian counteroffensive? Is that what it looks like, hitting them on their home turf as well as fighting back in Ukraine itself? Well, you know, over the past month, um, Russia has attacked uh, the Ukraine uh, for 17 attacks throughout the month. That's a lot of attacks there on Kyiv. And so instead of sitting back and receiving all these attacks, this may be the Ukrainians going on the offense and, and attacking Moscow back. And you can't blame them for trying to gain the initiative here and go after some strategic targets there in Moscow. It's sort of embarrassment on the Russians that uh, Ukraine has been able to attack deep inside of Moscow. This shows that the air defense systems there in Russia are weak. Hmm. It, it hurts my heart to see those school children running as we talk about what's happening in Kyiv, Molly, where we're seeing near daily Russian aerial assaults. What is the atmosphere like in the capital right now? And, and has it changed in recent days at all? Yeah, Anna, it feels massively different even than last week. So we've seen, you mentioned kind of the three waves of attacks that we have seen just in the last 24 hours. Look, going back to Saturday into Sunday night, four major waves. That was the biggest drone attack that this country has seen since the start of the war. We were talking to a couple of young girls uh, at one of the apartment buildings uh, that it wasn't clear if it either took a direct hit or if it was damaged from a drone interception. But we were talking to these two young students who live just around the corner. And one of them said very clearly she tries to sleep through it. She still has to go to class in the morning and she 
does not go down to the bunker. The other one was telling us her nerves are t completely fried now. Her behavior is completely changed, that now she goes down to the bunker immediately when you hear that air raid siren. And so when we talk about the air defenses in this city, and to be very clear, the capital city is much more protected than Kharkiv, than Dnipro, than even Lviv out in the west, when we talk about the air defenses working, that means that there is debris, fragments from these interceptions that come down and still cause a lot of damage. You mentioned at least one person was killed over the weekend, several others injured. And I got to say, looking at that 24-story residential apartment building, it was absolutely ruined. Uh, and it's very it's going to be very interesting to see whether Ukrainian officials say that was, in fact, a, a direct hit or if that was fragments uh, from an interception, a successful interception, I should say.